Those are our first example for calculating a confidence interval for a pair of data. So remember, for a pair of data, you have a pair of measurements on one group. Here, our measurements are computer and TV time for individual students. So we've already calculated the sample mean. So the sample mean difference is 5.36 with a corresponding standard deviation of 15.24 and a sample size of 25. So we're going to construct a 95% confidence interval. Starting out in step one, we'll identify our population. And here our population just generically is all students. Then our sample is going to be 25 students. And then remember, it's always beneficial to identify your parameter. So we have mu sub d. And because it's a mu, it's mean. The sub d indicates that it's a difference. So we would have mean difference. And then similar to what we did in other identifications of mu, we're going to put what we're measuring. And here we're measuring the difference between computer and TV use. And then for our population, so here it was just for students. And then remember for these problems, it is going to affect the way that you interpret your results given the direction of subtraction. And so we're going to include at the end how our differences were found. So that would affect the way that the confidence interval ultimately is interpreted. So here's our identification. Next, we have the gimme that the sampling distribution of x bar sub d is normal. Given the formulas that we're using, we have to make this assumption. We're going to verify that. And you either can do it based on the population's shape. So either population is bell-shaped or you can do it based on the size of the sample. Here though, because of what we saw from the sample, we know we can assume that the population is bell-shaped. So it being large, remember, it has to be an n greater than or equal to 30, and we only have 25. So next, moving into our interval, we've already found that x bar sub d is 5.36. Our t star will need to know degrees of freedom. So that's n minus 1. So here we have 24 degrees of freedom. We also need the confidence level, which we wanted to be 95% confident. So this would give us a T star of 95 and then 24. So we have a T star of 2.06. So now to calculate standard error, we have S sub D, which was 15.24 over the square root of n, which will be 3.05. Now I'm going to put b and c into work to give me d. So I have 3.05, which is standard error, times my t star, which is 2.06. So I come up with a margin of error equal to 6.28. So my multiplier, standard error, this is my margin of error. So then I'm going to use 5.36, that's my x bar sub d, plus or minus 6.28. Interval ranges from negative 0.92 to 11.64. So because this interval includes 0, meaning it ranges from a negative to a positive. Normally I wouldn't interpret it because it's going to sound kind of odd. And remember when zero is included it indicates that there's possibly no difference between the two measurements and so interpreting a confidence interval doesn't make sense to do. But for the sake of practicing interpretation we're going to interpret this. So same as before we identify how confident we are. So here we are 95 percent confident. And then we'll state our parameter, so the mean difference between computer and TV time. 
for students. It is between 0.92, negative 0.92, and 6 point, or 11.64 hours per week. And then we're going to include how the differences were found. So here it would be where differences equal computer minus TV. And that's important because it tells people how the directions were found, but also helps them to, to know which of the two variables were more. Mm -hmm.